midwives must call trans patients birthing people instead of mothers in case it damages their mental health, say the NHS. Midwives have been warned they risk harming trans people by saying mother. OK, midwives have been warned that they risk harming trans people who have given birth by calling them mother or mum. I have to read this two or three times because, quite frankly, I get a little weary of this, but I also get completely confused and baffled about it. You know, there is part of me that kind of thinks um, if I looked at uh, being in a hospital, a care environment, um, a birthing environment, I'm kind of the customer and I'm being looked after by a service I pay for. Um, and, and, and I suppose if I turn around and said, call me Jim or call me whatever, uh, it could be respected. But when I have organisations now starting to put out these sorts of guidelines and so forth, I have to pinch myself and, and think, uh, is it just me? Am I going a little mad? What's actually going on here? Perhaps I can get some help with this subject from Joe Bartosz, who joins me, a journalist who knows more about these sorts of things than I ever will. Joe, hello. Hello, thank you. It's lovely to be here. Well, it's very kind of you to join me. Look, I literally, I don't do this often, I read that out because that is what is in front of me on the screen in the story. First of all, just clarify for me what is being asked of midwives here. So um, just to correct you on a small point, it was Easy. actually a, a, a private hospital, so it wasn't NHS. Okay. There, there have been similar guidance given um, through different NHS trusts. Um, and essentially the logic is that um, if uh, a woman who, you know, by definition, that's going to be the only sex that gives birth, if a woman is um, identifies as a man, it's considered to be detrimental to her mental health. To call her um, mother. To call her a mother. Um, yes, which, which, to be honest, I think represents policy that is based on ideology um, rather than on healthcare or indeed best practice. So what we're actually talking about here is, and, and I'll probably have this statistic wrong, and I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but w w as a share of the population, uh, we're talking about um, trans people in these circumstances, probably being, what, 1%, 2% of the population? I don't know. It's, oh, quite, it's, it's, it's tiny, tiny isn't it? It's probably not yeah. even that, is it? But am I Absolutely. right to assume that, therefore, the whole policy of how we address mothers is to follow this advice uh, regardless, right? So, so, so the advice comes in, and are they going to end up with us calling everyone birthing people? Is that how yeah, and I mean, stupid we can I, get? Yeah, it is. It is ridiculous. And I mean, it's it's interesting to me that it is always women who are reduced to our sort of biological function. You know, that we're called sort of uh, menstruators or chest feeders or whatever it happens to be. Men are never called, haven't they, potential ejaculators. Um, you know, that would be rightly <laughs> understood as quite offensive. Um, and I, I think it should be for, you know, the, the reverse should obviously be true for women too. Um I suppose what, what really bothers me about this is that it centres, um, I think, a tiny narcissistic mi minority above not only the interests of staff in hospitals or other patients, but also over the babies themselves. Hmm. Look, um, I, I, know, I, know, I think the incident you're referring to, you said, took place in a private hospital. Actually, I've, I've, as, as I've got the article in front of me, I scrolled through it, and it, 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 these journalists went and actually asked some NHS foundation and trust um, uh, what their policy was. And in their reply, they actually wrote, a birthing person. I mean, they actually wrote that in their reply. That's offensive, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I think what, what really I find so frustrating about this is if you are woman enough to give birth, if you are woman enough to become a mother, then you are woman enough not to be offended by a bloody pronoun. I mean, get over yourselves. It's just ridiculous. Um, and I also think ultimately, and I, I realise this sounds quite hard line, but if you are not, if you are not um, robust enough to cope with being referred to accurately as your female sex, perhaps you ought to rethink your plans for motherhood because, my God, you know, it's going to be a hell of a lot more challenging than being misgendered. Well, I, I, I mean, look, you make a point very bluntly and absolutely valid in it. But it, it's kind of... What worries me about this is that um, it's not just about language. It's about a creeping ideology, isn't it, that's, that's creeping in that potentially causes harm to a huge number of people. 
Yeah, um, and I mean, there was a, a case recently in, in Australia, I think it was reported last week, of a woman who identified as a man, and she went into a hospital for hysterectomy because um, the hormones that she was taking, the testosterone that she was taking, made her, her organs atrophy, but it actually turned out that she was pregnant. So, um, you know, that's, that's a, a real horrible um, illustration of what can happen when you ignore biology and when you pander to people's delusions. You know, it's important that we are clear and that doctors and medical staff are honest about the fact that however somebody identifies, there are two sexes. It's it's very, very interesting. Um, uh, Natasha just sent a message in to me saying, no wonder the NHS can't recruit. Why would you want to be indoctrinated by this nonsense for midwives, woke nonsense for, for midwives? I wonder yet yeah, if actually, and, and it's true, I think, of the police force as well. Maybe you look at these two great services and think, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to get embroiled in this. It could lead me, A, to getting in trouble for all they know. But above all, why would you want to join a service? I mean, we don't have any evidence of that, but it's not an unreasonable question, is it? No, and I mean, you know, look, looking at um, the widely reported case um, yesterday where there was um, West Yorkshire police, um, I think it was around about six officers arrested an autistic yes, young girl yes. because he referred to... Um, one of the police officers looking as looking like a lesbian like her nan and that was kind of jumped on and you look at the sort of way that these institutions more, more broadly are falling apart and it just seems like they're focusing on the minutiae on tiny little details whilst actually the sort of body of the work that they should be doing whether that's the NHS whether that's libraries whether that's education whether that's the police force is crumbling. Is this here to stay? Joe, do you think the do you think we've lost basically people who I'd say have more common sense? Do you, do you think we've lost, or are we is 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 this it? This sort of ideology is going is here to stay and going to grow? No, I don't think we've lost. I think in the UK we have been leading the way on this. I think in America there is still some way to go, and obviously they tend to you know where where America sort of. Um, sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold, is a common saying, and I think it's true. Mm. Um, so I think in America, there are lawsuits um, being brought now by detransitioners. That is finally pushing against what is, let's be honest, um, a, a very lucrative um, ideology. Industry. And business, it's an the, industry. Um, it's yeah. industry. Of course yeah. it is. Um, so I think actually we are beginning to win. I think um, there have been some critical cases in the UK, such as the Maui for Starter ruling, um, which protected the right to um, to express gender critical views, i.e. believing in reality, that there are two sexes. Um, and I think that has made a huge difference. So I think we are winning, but it would take a very long time um, to unpick this ideology because it's based upon feelings rather than facts. And I think a lot of people are terribly worried about being offensive. I think if I understood you right there, you said uh, gender critical theory, i.e. there's a man and a woman. That's where we've got to. It's kind of yeah. ludicrous. Yeah. Listen, Joe that, Bartosz, that <laughs> thank, thank you so much for joining us. A dose of common sense there from Joe uh, on that subject. Let me know your views. You already are tweeting in on that. I mean, it does beg a belief. Maybe I'm just an old so-and-so behind the times.